Yes, I was just asking, by way of introduction or beginning, um, if there were any uh, questions left from last time, particularly with regards to alpha function, alpha elements, and the contact barrier. Well, I understand the contact barrier is that is that you might say between and contacting both the conscious and the unconscious. Yes. Um, and it's something that is con the alpha function continually works on it throughout waking as well as sleeping. During wakefulness as well as during sleep. Yes. And yes. And it is. Might you say it? My thought was. Let me ask you this way: What what would happen if somehow the contact barrier uh, was not maintained or was broken? Is that where the 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 unconscious breaks through somehow, uh, like in dreaming, but it, it breaks through in a kind of a destructive way or a psychotic yes, way? Or it, it, not like in dreaming, <coughs> because for as long as you dream, mm -hmm. something from the unconscious selectively filters through mm -hmm. Consciousness from the unconscious, mm -hmm. but it's selective. It's not that the unconscious breaks through and you have it all there just because you went to sleep. And even when it does come through, it comes through in a guise. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't dream that you're having intercourse with your mother. Mm -hmm. Though we know that that wish is in all of us since we all went through the Oedipal conflict, but we buried that long ago, mm -hmm. so it does remain in our unconscious, and it may only um, come through the, the selective membrane called the contact barrier in a true guise, so that not even when you sleep you have to recognize or to face that wish. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And the contact barrier makes that happen. That's the function of the alpha function providing and refurbishing permanently the contact barrier to reassure that repression works, that what has to be repressed stands in the unconscious, mm -hmm. and also that the stimuli from your external um, life, let's say, doesn't invade your unconscious. That would be very disturbing, wouldn't it? I mean, we equated it last time as staying without skin if you, yeah. for any reason, if you get burned, for instance. One of the problems is in third, third degree burns, right? You get mm -hmm. skinless and there is a problem. Mm -hmm. the uh, all the proteins from your serum mm -hmm. transpire, come out, and that can kill you. Mm -hmm. But also, all the bacteria and all everything that is around you can mm -hmm. get in, and that can kill you too. It's from mm -hmm. within and from without. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, if our contact barriers, for whatever reason, would stop being permanently restored by our alpha function, something similar would happen in our psyches. Our consciousness would get overwhelmed by external stimuli without any selection, and vice versa, our unconscious um, fantasies, wishes, or thoughts would erupt in such a way in our minds that we would go crazy. We wouldn't be able to think or to devote our attention to anything because we would be flooded all the time by our unconscious. And is it, should we think of the contact barrier as a function or as a 
also as a structure? It, does it have a substance to it, if you could see it? Or? It's an excellent question. What, what do you think? <coughs> the question is, do we see it as a function? Do we see it as a structure? No. Is it both? Uh, I think it's both. It, it is both. I mean, strictly speaking, <coughs> the function is the alpha function. Mm -hmm. The alpha function provides the alpha elements to create and recreate uh, the contact barrier that, on the other side, just as our skin gets eroded all the time. That is why it needs to be refurbished, recreated all the time. Mm -hmm. Like our skin, you always have new cells coming from your subcutaneous tissues or your dermis up because the skin is getting eroded. So you need to have new cells coming up. I mean, if that stops, you would stop having a skin, right? But in a sense, we could say it's also a function because the contact barrier is a structure, but it's a live structure, uh -huh. right? It's not like a stone or like the walls that you put them in place and they are there for years on end. This is a structure, it's a live structure that will only stay in place for as long as the alpha function is renewing its structure again and again. And it has a function. It's a structure that has a function. Has a function yes. The function of keeping a selective separation and a selective contact between unconscious and conscious. That's why we said last time that the, this oxymoron um, of, of the two opposites, contact and barrier, yes. applies because it's simultaneously a barrier, but it's also not so much of a barrier because it provides some contact, but some contact, not all the contact between conscious and unconscious. And when you were saying earlier that, oh, Shiva. Yes, Julie? Pardon? Yeah, oh, we thought you, you wanted to say something. Oh, um, I, I do have a question, but I'll wait till this discussion is finished. Okay. Well, when you say that, you know, it, it allows selectively material from the unconscious to come into the consciousness, is it the, is it the alpha function that is uh, allowing or providing that selectivity? It's That's a good question. It is, but it's not the alpha function that carries out the selection. Oh. <coughs> Right, we would Bion doesn't elaborate on that <coughs> because he uh -huh. takes the the model of Freud that it is our superego that or our internal censorship, let's say, that accepts or refuses to accept uh -huh. an unconscious content. But just to give you an example, for instance, the wish to eat. When you're satisfied, after you had a meal and your wish to eat is gone because you already ate, the wish to eat gets back into your unconscious. It's not conscious. Mm -hmm. You don't feel that now I want to eat because now you don't want to eat. Mm -hmm. You finished eating already. So the wish to eat is no longer, let's say, invested, not even in your unconscious as something uh, what you call it uh, urgent, it went mm -hmm. away, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it is in your unconscious, it lies there mm -hmm. as a potential that can get conscious again. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say if you haven't eaten for six hours or eight hours, the wish to eat that was resting in your unconscious mm -hmm. emerges in consciousness and mm -hmm. Since it's not conflictive, it's not anything that you feel you have to refuse because it goes against, let's say, your values, mm -hmm. you let it pass. It comes through the contact barrier and you say, well, now I'm really hungry. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But let's say... Um, uh, if you experience a strong envious feeling towards someone and you would like really 
from your unconscious, let's say, to make an offensive remark, but at the same time, your moral conscious says, you don't do that, you know, that's really ugly. I mean, you shouldn't, because this person is also very nice. It's just that you feel angry and envious. Mm -hmm. Then that is conflictive. You wouldn't let that emerge mm -hmm. into consciousness, because it would make you feel bad and ugly for having mm -hmm. <coughs> an ugly wish towards someone <coughs> that is making you feel envious of someone you value. Therefore, that would not pass, probably. You so might say that your superego or your inner sensor is preventing... Exactly. It's being selective. It's preventing... It's being selective. Said that, it's okay. a no-no, yeah. <laughs> all right? Yeah. But being hungry, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so one can come into consciousness, the other one, no, no, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you may then have a dream, let's say, in the night, <coughs> where that <coughs> shows up in a guise. Mm -hmm. Who knows which? I mean, there are many forms. Our uh, minds are terribly creative and can put that in the form of a script, let's say. A uh, very simple one would be uh, your desire to m make a mean remark on someone gets projected out and then you dream that someone is thinking badly of you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And then you wake up and you say, I wonder where that came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why did I dream that? Someone is thinking badly of me and someone who perhaps I even have some esteem for what's happened, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Well, what may have happened is a role reversal, right? You displaced and projected your bad feelings that make you feel ugly and that you shouldn't have them onto someone in your dream that is the one that has these ugly feelings, but God forbid, it's not you, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, this is just by way of an example, right? So um, yeah, go ahead. So would you say then that the superego and the defense mechanisms interact with the contact barrier in such a way as to um, contribute to how that selection takes place? I think that is a good or way to put it, yes. Pardon? Yes, I think that's a good way to put it, yes. But it also seems to me that, well, that, well, because I think of the contact barrier also as a projection inward, intrapsychically, of the psychic skin, of the skin, in a way. Could it be seen as that? And then um, it almost seems like, well, yeah, I, I don't quite know whether the actual defense mechanisms would be part of it, but I guess I'm not so clear about that, whether... Well, I would say, for as long as defense mechanisms uh, are there to hold something in place, uh, in a place different from consciousness, certainly one would say that the defense mechanisms are woven into the contact barrier. I think it would be fair to say, yes. Actually, they could be also alpha elements, wouldn't they? In, in some way? Necessarily so. Be made up of? Necessarily so, because the contact barrier is made of alpha elements. Without alpha elements, there's no contact barrier. Yeah. And without alpha function, there are no alpha elements. So it all goes together, right? The alpha function transforms internal or, earth or external stimuli into, and we are going to talk about that in a while when we go 